Hi guys, welcome back to channel The Dimensions of Anatomy. I am Dr. Aravind and this is second in the three part video series discussing the anatomy of larynx. In the first part, we saw about the cartilages, joints and ligaments of larynx. If you haven't watched it yet, please do watch it now. The link is available in the description and is also now on your screen. In this second part, we will be discussing the inlet and cavity of larynx. First, let's see the inlet of larynx. For that, we will bring back the old diagram of ligaments of larynx, which we practice drawing in our part one video. Here, this is the inlet of larynx. It is placed obliquely directed backwards and upwards. It opens into the laryngopharynx. The boundaries of inlet of larynx are epiglottis anteriorly, interarytenoid fold of mucous membrane posteriorly, and on each side it is bound by airy epiglottic fold. Now we will make a section of our larynx through the plane shown in red here and draw the posterior view of the section. Section of hyoid thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, tracheal rings, the intrinsic membranes, quadrate membrane, conus elasticus, the folds, vestibular fold, vocal fold, internal laryngeal nerve okay let's see the cavity of larynx now the cavity of larynx presents two folds of mucous membrane on each side which you might remember we already saw in part one the lower border of quadrate membrane is the vestibular fold and the upper border of conus elasticus is the ocal fold. So we have two folds, the vestibular fold above and the ocal fold below. The space between the right and left vestibular folds is called a herima vestibule and the space between the two ocal folds is called a herima glottidis. Now we will make a transverse section of larynx and draw the view from above. Here we have the epiglottis, thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, arytenoid cartilage, Ocal folds. Here, this space between the two vocal folds, as we saw, is a rima glotted is. This rima glottidis has an anterior intermembranous part which forms the three-fifth of it which is present between the two vocal folds and the posterior intercartilaginous part which is present between the arytenoid cartilages. 
the remoglotidis is limited posteriorly by the interarotenoid fold of mucous membrane. The vestibular and ocal folds divide the cavity of larynx into three parts. The part above the vestibular fold is called the vestibule or supraglottis. The part between the vestibular and vocal fold is called sinus or ventricle of larynx. And the part below the vocal folds is called infraglottis. So, the part between the vestibular and vocal fold is called sinus of Morgagni or ventricle of larynx. And the anterior part of this sinus is prolonged upwards as a diverticulum between the vestibular fold and thyroid cartilage and this is called saccule of larynx. This saccule of larynx contains lot of mucus glands which aids in lubrication and therefore is called oil can of larynx. Coming to the clinical anatomy, rima glottidis that is the space between the two vocal folds is the narrowest part of the respiratory passage. So, any foreign body which enters the respiratory passage usually is lodged here that is in the rima glottidis and this leads to suffocation. Now and then you may be hearing news about persons suffocating to death due to lodging of foreign bodies in respiratory passage. Remember, those foreign bodies are usually lodged here in this space called rima glottidis. As far as dental students are concerned, this is something that can happen during their practice. Since they work on the mouth of a patient in a reclined position in dental chair, there is a chance of an instrument or restorative material or crown accidentally entering the respiratory passage of the patient and leading to suffocation which is a dental emergency of course you will be learning ways and means to prevent that in your clinical years and also about the first aid to be instituted if at all such a thing happens if you are interested you can go ahead and read about the first aids available in such a scenario like for example tapping in between the shoulder blades or Heimlich maneuver or even emergency cricothyrotomy and moving ahead piriform fossa is the space which lies between the quadrate membrane and the medial side of thyroid cartilage. This space that is the piriform fossa is sometimes called smuggler's fossa because it is used to smuggle out precious stones, diamonds etc. This space is also the space where foreign bodies like fish bones can lodge and the point to note here is during removal of any such foreign body from piriform fossa, internal laryngeal nerve which traverses this piriform fossa should be preserved. With this, we will end this session. If you like the video, do hit the like button. Part 3 of this series discussing the muscles of larynx will soon be uploaded. So, keep the channel subscribed. As usual, PDF notes is available in the link provided in the description. For further guidance and online classes, do contact me at the mail ID provided. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.